Dear friends, it's a great pleasure for us to be able to share our reflections for you. As you see, we have created this paper here with a professional method of cooperation uh, in a short time. We shall start by setting the scene for our reflections. First of all, the industrial world. What we face today is certainly better products. We face enhanced technology, globalization, explosion of information technology, impact on the planet. And there has been an interesting journey from the Newcomen engine in 1712 until the Boeing Dreamliner 2012, actually just 300 years. It means we have faced a crazy rate of change and enormous pressure on designers in this process. Another scene is where we actually are just now, a scene which is at the moment organized by the Science Society. Many good people are supporting us, staging conferences and so on. And we are facing an explosion in topics, as Herbert has shown in the middle curve here. We are facing a huge number of publications we have left behind us. And we have the consolidation challenge, which we still struggling with. The third scene is our world, cancer mine world. Both graduated in 67, 80 years in design practice together, research and teaching, honorary fellows in science society, and both retired. We have attended nearly all ISAC conferences. <laughs> Two crazy old guys with time to reflect. Our reflection will be based upon a reference model showing these two worlds, the dust in industry, where new practices are leading to power services system and much more, and where the result has to do with selling products, uh, hopefully to benefit for, the, for humanity and society. And the other world, academia, where new research topics are taken up and studied, new methods are developed and knowledge, and we publish these results. But interesting and important is the link between these two worlds, and we will focus upon this transfer and impact shown here. Related to this reference model, we will ask the following questions. First of all, is the current research into design methodology appropriate? And it means we will try to answer the questions, what is accurate design methodology? What do we mean by appropriate? What is happening in practice? What is happening in research? What is the impact of research on practice? And then we will come to a conclusion. So you see that we are emphasizing the what question and not so much the how question. What is design methodology? A definition might be the one you see here. A prescriptive procedure containing concepts, models, several methods, and a relevant terminology. Rosenberg and Eggers claim that this area is a branch of science which critically started these work procedures a call of design methodology, but PAL and cooperators claim that it's a concrete course of action for the designing of technical system. It means something we find into, in practice. So it seems that design methodology is not is a, an ambiguous concept. We might also ask, what is actually a good design method? And the Birkhofer group is claiming that it should, for instance, improve speed and efficiency, effectiveness, help planning, organizing, control, be flex simple and flexible. And the question is, should current methods simply be made better, or what should we do? Another question is, what is a good design methodology, actually? Uh, and Batke Sharp and her group is claiming that a good methodology should establish why and when there's a need for support for designers in practice, help designers to cope with uncertainty in their tasks, adapt to the peculiar social organizational environment, and be capable of being transferred into praxis. So maybe we should develop new methods to match better the needs of praxis. Our second question is, what do we mean by appropriate? Why is appropriate important? Up in the top or right area, we find product services system and much more the goal area for industry and also the goal area we have to admit for us here. And there should, we shall we shall respect these green arrows here, which is linking uh, research topics, new methods, new practice to what's going, up, going on up there. It means we should, uh, we should uh, see this 
area up there as the challenges and the drivers for our research. Research topics, methods, and practices should be appropriate for new products. Our reference model, which you see here, may be seen as a value chain where we, if you unfold it, go, go in from a researcher and the research activity and the transfer of the method to the use where we find the designer and where we have the results, which is influencing society, ecology, and creating products. An important thing we have here, a dynamically moving target with our, our problem is to really to see chances and drivers in the link between this uh, practice and research. We suggest the following criteria for judging appropriateness. We should have relevant goals. We should have eff effective use of the uh, research resources. We should have appropriate results for practice, for design knowledge, impact on innovation. We will look upon this value chain more, more times and see how it is broken by paradoxes. But first, we will look upon the path. There's a long line of concern, diagnosis, and contribution we find in the past. Uh, NSF has published a report on 20-year strategy for design research. EPSRC has, uh, has made a prioritization of design research. At the Design Society meeting in Rome, there was made the drafts for the document Future Direction for Design Research, where we are expecting that we see the next edition and so on. And by Herbert Birkhoff's Retirement Colloquium 2011, 21 contributions were collected uh, from researchers in a book, The Future of Design Methodology. And you see some of the references are taken from this book. So when you see this CH dot dot, this reference is taken from Herbert's book. And there are old books, Matusek, Asimov, Leck, and many more. We'll return to that a little later and, of course, conference proceedings, which is creating our path. Plenty of material to look upon. Some priorities are existing. NSF say, for instance, that we should have system integration and we should have design information support system. EPSRC are saying that we should have knowledge and information management and we should have integration of processes and tools. From Birkhofer's book and Birkhofer's conclusion, uh, the five points here, life cycle development methodology, holistic methodology, human-centered methodology, integration and information methodology, and consolidated design methodology. And the Science Society's Rome meeting launched these three goals we can see here. Efficient design, sustainable design, documented or justified design. We see these efforts as trends toward integration, consolidation and sustainability of our, our research area. We would like to illustrate some wisdom from old books. They treat a simplified but complete world and crystallize the fundamentals and they show basic reasoning patterns that might have or, or often are, has disappeared in modern books. For instance, Matusiak, the German edition 57, the English edition 63, uh, he presented a systematic and structured approach to mechanical design 20 years before the first German edition of Ball and Bytes. And Asimov, United States, 62, added this design process within the context of integrated power development, the environment, and the whole life cycle. And Ken will show that he is actually pretty ahead of his time, Asimov. I have my copy of Asimov's book here. It was published in 1962. It was therefore written when I was still a teenager and at school. I'm just going to open it, get my glasses out, which I didn't need when I was a teenager. The first sentence of the book says, design is the essential purpose of engineering. Let me just tell you what the first two chapters of this book cover. The first chapter, philosophy of engineering design. Design by evolution, design by innovation, philosophy of engineering design. Let us just consider what the second chapter of this book addressed. Engineering design and the environment. Interaction of design and the environment, the socio-ecological system, 
the socio-ecological influence on engineering design, flux in the production consumption cycle, range of goods and services. And if you want some suggestions for design for X, let me just turn to page 18. Design for maintenance, design for reliability, design for safety, design for convenience in use, taking account of human factors, design for aesthetics, design for operational economy, design for adequate duration of service. This book was written over half a century ago. Thank you, Ken. And a third example, Gleck here, describes his personal design experiences and provides numerous structured insight and guidelines, principles for designers. So, there's a wisdom out there, often overlooked by researchers. Let's continue our questions. What is happening in Paxis? Interesting thing from Fingen and Dixon in 89, they claimed that a good research institution should understand and master best practice. This is not really the truth we find today. Design practice has changed radically since the 60s, when Ken and I was educated. Today, with computer system and so on, it's complex, it's dis dis distributed design teams, information technology, pressure and risk, and so on. Cantamessa has illustrated in Herbert's book uh, the, the designer, what he's facing, the designer today, and he might look like the one up in the corner there. This designer is saying, I can cope with the system, but how do I cope with this crazy world of interconnected stuff, the complexity? I understand customer and market segments, but not a complex set of st stakeholders. Do I really have to deal with business and politics too in the company? What is the nature of these modern systems? What are the equational motion of Google? We also have design results. More complex today, megatronic, adoptronic, based on modular platform. And Wallace claims that products these days are much better, much cheaper than in the past. Many companies and design teams are doing excellent jobs, uh, even if they do not use the specific new methods proposed by design researchers. And uh, Tim McAloon proposed or claim that parallel service systems are a new type of designs and new boundary conditions are part of them. An example, Kindle. Kindle is now in the hand of Ken's wife, and I know that she's sitting at home and looking upon us. Hello, Annette. <laughs> the weight is 241 grams. It can store, have a storage of 3,500 books, and it can access books in 60 seconds. It can so, so much more than the physical product. These are the type of products we are facing. We find some paradoxes in this, in this practice. Designers face rapidly increasing complexity, pressure, issues, and competition, but continue to produce amazing new th things, new designs. The challenge for us researchers is to understand the dynamics, to pr produce exp explanatory theories, and develop methods relevant to practice. And we see the paradox that designers need all the help they can, but they all often appear to resist attempts to get them to consider how to improve their design process. So the challenge for us is to demonstrate the validity and benefits of methods and sell them to designers. It takes much more than a design methodology to develop new products. Please, Ken. Thank you, Mons. My wife loves her Kindle, and as a product service system, it is a truly amazing design. It's just a pity that they didn't give a little bit more design thought to the user manual, which frustrates my wife enormously. I'm going to pick up at this point what is happening in research? Design research has expanded and matured. We undertake research into design, to understand design, to create theories to explain design. We undertake research for design. Building on those theories, we develop methods and tools to support designers in practice. Over the last 30 years, we've given a lot of thought to how we should approach design research. 
And a wonderful contribution has been made recently by our colleagues, Lucien Blessing and Amaris Chakrabarti, in their book on design research methodology, the seeds of which were sown in the early 90s in Cambridge. There are many more opportunities now for us to validate our research. Research has developed, it's much more experimental, observational, multidisciplinary, and this we welcome. It's expanding into the life cycle, addressing knowledge management issues, a huge range of topics. But at the presentation at this conference, Bart analyzed 71 recent publications in research in engineering design, and nearly 40% did not address validation, and nearly 50% no industrial application. We have some amazing results. And just historically, I put up at the top there, Marple's Decision Tree, published by David Marples in 1960, two years before Asimov's book was published. He'd undertaken an observational study in industry during the 1950s. We have support tools for capturing rationale, the exciting work on design structure matrices, and many models that help us gain insights into the world of design. Chris McMahon gave the first keynote address at this conference. He did a remarkable analysis of 4,000 publications in the Design Society archive. I consider this a remarkable analysis that's going to be of great value to you in the future. It provides many insights. But I noticed he said, possibly with just a little bit of sadness, that a theme running through many of these publications was, here is my method, this is how it works. It appears that the link between theory and methods is often poor. Things are going to change. Vatka Schaub and her group provide this table in Herbert's book, and clearly, as we've already mentioned, product service systems, open innovation, augmented reality, user-centered, interdisciplinary. It's a huge challenge, but Mons and I are really very excited about the intellectual capacity that is available within our community. You've only got to observe it here at this conference. I'm looking at it. We're amazed by the energy, the enthusiasm, and the activity. It's all really quite exciting. But we have these paradoxes. Researchers propose many new methods, but often do not validate their methods in practice. Researchers claim to be rigorous and scientific, but frequently fail to build on the foundations of the past and acknowledge the work of others. There's quite a bit to be done here. We ought to really note the wisdom in old books, like Asimov, Glegg, and Matusek, to reference other researchers and avoid islands of research, and to adopt and explain a clear design research methodology. So, the theme of I said 11 is impacting society through engineering design. So let's look at impact. Transfer and impact are not new topics. If we look at the NSF report, National Science Foundation of America, in 1996, effective methods need to be developed for transferring research results into industry. We jump ahead four years to the workshop held at Bath University in the UK. Methods and procedures needed to assess the impact of new tools, methods, and systems. And the key, the theme for my chapter in Herbert's book was knowledge transfer is the missing link. In our community, we frequently discuss the topic that all the work we do and the methods we propose are not used in industry. Herbert, on the very first page of his book, which I've shown you, starts off 
industry only reluctantly adopts. But Kashab and her group, they have pointed out the problematic transfer and applications of methods into industry. And they give some reasons. Missing validation, inadequate advertisement, we don't sell our methods. Addressing knowledge, not application, low flexibility, time consuming, lack of support, no adaption. So there seems to be quite a lot of evidence to suggest that we're not very good at transferring our methods into industry, or industry is not very good at picking up our methods. But you're not going to tell me that a company like Rolls-Royce can produce gas turbine engines and capture about 40% of the world market without their designers using design methods, maybe implicitly. But Rolls-Royce, and Rolls-Royce is an exceptional company, it spends a great deal of time consciously addressing improving its design process. And it has a generic design practice manual. And in that manual, 34 methods are recommended and described. And if you look at the topics in our program here at I said 11, and we look at requirements checklist, functional analysis diagram, matrix decision analysis, root cause analysis. Are these so different from the topics that we're working on? And Matheson, at his presentation, and I quoted from him because I jotted it down at the time, there are many methods to help designers, and they use them. And he went on to describe a case study where a specific method was used to produce a really rather radical and exciting innovation. So. What are my paradoxes for impact? Researchers claim their design methods are not used in industry, but methods clearly are used in industry. I think we need to sort that out. Industrial companies collaborating on research projects expect an impact. You can't get a research grant in engineering design in the UK if you do not have a collaborating industrial partner. And they very frequently have to put quite larger sums of money into the project. So you'd think they're really keen to suck out the results. But very frequently, they make nobody responsible for picking up the results and transferring them. One can understand this when you consider the pressures that most people in industry today are working under. There isn't much time left at the end of the day. Research funding bodies emphasize the importance of transferring results. Obviously, they want to justify that they're spending the government's research funding money uh, sensibly. But researchers are seldom given any recognition or reward for this very difficult task. And it's not an easy task. Transferring results has to be planned. It requires special skills. And it takes a long time. We've often complained in our community that very few people from industry attend our conferences. So I'm delighted, Morgans and I, that 20% of the delegates at this conference here in Copenhagen are from industry. So, our question was, is the current research into design methodology appropriate? And Morgans established five criteria. Relevant goals. Well, we think many of the research goals and some of the results are really radically new and very relevant. And we really should not only tell each other, which of course we're doing here at this conference, but we should sell these results to industry. We must be much more positive and aggressive and an upbeat. We don't always think that we use our, result, our resources effectively. There's a bit of a scattergun approach. I think we could be a little bit more careful, and there are moves towards consolidation. However, there is an advantage in the scattergun ap approach. One shot may hit something that we hadn't thought about, we hadn't expected, and produces really exciting breakthrough results. You never know. Under appropriate results for practice, research for design, there are examples of successful transfer, but more needs to be done to develop rigorously validated and appropriate results. Remember my quote, nearly 40% of the papers analyzed demonstrated no validation. There are many, many good results. We should shout about them. Research into design, understanding design, producing design knowledge. 
industry's time scale is fairly short. I think as researchers, we should, as a duty, at times, take a longer view. We should speculate. We should be curious. We should undertake research that looks into interesting new areas. And so, to a certain extent, deciding on what appropriate is in our own hands. There is no doubt, in our view, that design knowledge is fragmented and needs consolidating. But we're delighted that the Design Society is leading an initiative in this area, and there's much discussion of this topic. Impact on innovation? Well, you see that we've highlighted it. Knowledge transfer from research into practice is the missing link. We need to spend a bit more time on that. However, we're quite excited. There's clear evidence from ICID 11 that our results are having an increasing impact. Morton's introduced the value chain. We said we see a number of paradoxes which represent research <coughs> challenges. And we just thought we'd add a few goals to this uh, value chain. Let us make our research radical, relevant, and please, rigorous. Let's make our results capable of being transferred, adaptable, and learnable. The methods comprehensive and valid. And when designers come to use these methods, they should provide value, be user-friendly, and be influential. But we must never forget the rapid rate of change in the globalized world, so we're always chasing a moving target. But I do see with optimism the fact that we will help to fulfill the goal of IZ11 and impact society through engineering design. Morton's and I were there at the birth of the Design Society, and we've both just stepped down from the advisory board. We feel it's in really good shape and in really good hands. We think the conferences being organized are wonderful. We really like the less formal structure of this conference, which allows more discussion. We're amazed that 12 special interest groups have been established, and they're so active. And we're delighted to hear from Chris that the Design Society is preparing a clear manifesto for appropriate research into design methodology. And we both feel extremely optimistic. Now, some of you know that I quite like beer, and that I make my own beer at home, and have done for many years. Well, Denmark is also known for beer, and for many years, there was an advertising slogan. Mords and I want to say, I said 11, probably the best conference in the world. <laughs> so, it's goodbye from us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.